2017, Ray Weiss, Kip Thorne, and Barry Barish were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. The award is given every year in Stockholm on December 10th by the King of Sweden. It's announced to the world, however, two months earlier. My call came just before Barry's. Mine was at about 2.15. It was surprising how long they talked to each of us. Uh, I was sound asleep. And, uh, and so the phone rang. I knew it was the wee hours of the morning. I knew it had to be come from, coming from Stockholm. I struggled out of bed and took the call. I had thought, you know, we've been expecting this. I had, I had hoped it would go to the team. It didn't, it went to us. But we had been expecting it, and so I thought, well, I'll be blasé, but in fact, I was overwhelmed. <laughs> I don't know why. So my call came after Kip's, but enough after so that I had already, we were warned this may happen, so we were ready. And emotion, not ready, but prepared. And uh, so I had set the alarm for 2.40 a.m., knowing that 2.45 is when it was supposed to be live streamed. Uh, I got up at 2.40 from the alarm. There had been no phone call. So. <laughs> so I assumed they had passed us over. Instead, I went to my laptop to try to see, well, who did they give it to or what? And then my cell phone started ringing. And whoever here can tell me how they got my cell phone number that I give to any, nobody, I don't know. But they called on my cell phone and then was like, Kip. My feelings uh, at the time, I think, were a mixture between, a complicated mixture between being thrilled and being humbled. Professor Weiss, Professor Barish, Professor Thorne. You have been awarded the 2017 Nobel Prize for Physics for your decisive contributions to the detector of the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory and for the observation of gravitational waves. On behalf of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, it's my honor and my great pleasure to convey to you our warmest congratulations. We detected this event in September of 2015. Did we immediately know it was gravitational waves? Not really. Most of us, or some of us at least, had deep worries how we might be mistaken, how we might be fooling ourselves, or how we might be being fooled. We turned on a new apparatus, and in turning on a new apparatus, maybe it could generate some sort of shaky signals, but they weren't real. And in order to test that, you have to run it for some period of time. We calculated how long that had to be, and it, it was basically a month. In a month's time, we could look at all the bins of time in the two, correlate them together, and see what the probability is that you could get any sort of signal like this in the detector. And that's calculated to be a magic number in physics when you believe something, which we call five sigma or the probability is less than one in some hundreds of thousands of years. This is a pleasure to be here. But before I start, I want to acknowledge that the three of us wouldn't be here at all if it weren't for people who were in the LIGO laboratory, in the LIGO scientific collaboration, and in the Virgo collaboration and the Virgo experiment. And since some of you are here, I'm going to insist that you stand up. Would you please do that? really the reason we are here. Ultimately, this is about, this really is about the curiosity, the ingenuity, the creativity of the best that the human species have to offer. So that is the beautiful story that you have enabled us to celebrate tonight and tomorrow. Let me just focus on Ray for a moment. 
Partly because he's the reason I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> or partly because I want to say, I don't know a most humble human being on the face of the planet. Ray has said many times, many times, that there are many Nobel laureates in this LIGO project. There are many individuals who deserve that Nobel Prize. And I believe, and I know a few of them, and I know their work, and he's right about that. But Ray one day needs to understand, and Kit described that story beautifully yesterday, that without him, we wouldn't have been here. You started this. And you assembled an amazing team, including Barry and the rest of you, to accomplish an amazing and an achievable goal. So, Ray, one of these days, you just have to accept, <laughs> accept that you received a Nobel Prize. <laughs> In 2007, Barry was given an honorary PhD degree by the University of uh, Florida. He came and he gave this wonderful talk, a very commanding presentation, and uh, at the end of it, I have to remind you at this time, 2007, the United States was deeply involved in the Iraq War, and it wasn't going well for the United States. One of my senior colleagues, a very distinguished physicist himself, a gentleman by the name of uh, John Clowder, comes up to me and says, Dave, that guy Barry Barish, if he were, were leading the Iraq war, it would be over. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that it took that long, that it took generations of scientists to get us where we are, is of course a sign that it was not easy. The field has had supporters who kept it going through those four decades. But of course not everybody was a supporter, we had a little bit about that in Barry's talk again. And in Scotland we have a drinking toast for such occasions, <laughs> which I thought I would read out to you. <laughs> May those who love us, love us. And those that don't love us, May God turn their hearts. <laughs> and if he doesn't turn their hearts, May he turn their ankles, so we won't know them by their limping. <laughs> Kip, in his talk yesterday, was inspiring about the future, about where we're going after this discovery. So on behalf of the generations of scientists to come, who are going to be able to take advantage of that, thank you to the laureates for all the work that they've done in getting us to the point that we are tonight. Thank you. It was 400 years ago that Galileo created modern electromagnetic astronomy by turning a small optic telescope on the sky and discovering the moons of Jupiter. It was two years ago that this wonderful LIGO-Virgo collaboration turned on the advanced detectors, the advanced LIGO detectors, and saw the gravitational waves from collisions of two black holes. In those 400 years since Galileo, we have learned so much about the universe with optical astronomy. Our understanding of the universe is so different today than it was 400 years ago. What might be the future 400 years from now when we have 400 years in our pockets of gravitational astronomy, I think the future is really very, very exciting. of the Nobel week, it's hard if you ask me, you know, what's the most meaningful part of that? Sitting next to the queen, which I did, or, or walking with this beautiful princess, or all this, that's all great fun. It's hard to say that anything's more meaningful than the actual ceremony where you're handed the medal and document, a certificate by the king. But I would say that another part of it actually got to me much more and was totally unanticipated. The ceremony 
Afterwards, what people don't realize is they come up and they take away your medal and take away your certificate, uh, not for good, but because you're not, they don't want you to lose it. Each of us have an appointment where you went to the Nobel Foundation offices. And one of the things, you sit down and you know they give you the medal and this and that. And then a book opened up to a page that had uh, a 2017 on the top. And you just signed it. So there was nothing else but signing it. Except that if you look back at the page before, it was 2016, the page before that, 2015, and so forth. So, you know, I could look back to see Feynman's signature or uh, Bohr or Shelley Glashow or anybody that I knew. To actually feel that I'm in the same book as these guys was, uh, had a huge uh, impact kind of emotionally on me. It was paging back, which I did, that uh, really got to me. Thank you.